What's going on people? It's your boy Rob the God here. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys had a great day. So today I want to talk about something that I wish I talked about a long time ago and it's study techniques. Now over the last winter break I've been thinking about this and something I really wanted to focus on a lot this last couple of weeks was trying to find better ways for me to study and I wish that Back in the past, when I first started pharmacy school, that I learned these study techniques earlier so I can get better marks and I'll have less resistance in terms of my studying. I'm going to share with you guys right now my top study techniques and what I'm doing right now to study in pharmacy school and hopefully you guys can learn better, faster, and more efficiently. Let's get right into the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is that the fact that I recently got an iPad Pro for my studying. And before I used to have a laptop, and I like the laptop, but I didn't really enjoy when I took down notes and stuff like that, because when you're typing down notes, I can easily just fall asleep in class, just like Ray Charles in it, like, you know what I'm saying? Just literally just sitting there, half asleep, just writing down notes. Yay, yay. But when I'm doing the iPad, I send my notes straight to my iPad, and I mark the notes using the Apple Pencil. And that's been very, very important for me, especially because when you're taking down notes, you have to require more brain power to actually figure out what important words you want to put on there. So when I have to write down stuff, I have to make sure that what stuff I'm writing down is very, very important. So that helps me a lot, especially the fact that I stay up longer in class and I focus more on what the teacher is talking about. And also Notability has this cool feature where you can literally record what the teacher is saying. And this feature I feel like is very, very good for classes where you don't get any additional information. So like if your teacher really just comes in the class, just gives you an assignment out of nowhere, and he just like starts talking out of nowhere in class. This feature is very, very useful because then you can write out notes and you won't miss a single thing. But like, I don't like this feature that much because my teachers give us PowerPoints and like, I would say 85% of the information is right on the PowerPoints. And I really don't want to hear him talk twice. I don't want to hear him talk in class and then talk him again. But and it's useful though if you don't have any PowerPoints or anything else uh, to go on before the class starts and additional information. Most, also, most information you have also is online. Like for me, I'm a pharmacy student. So like I can learn about hypertension or hyperlipidemia or uh, infectious diseases online, honestly. I don't really need to have an initial source my teacher talking like that. But for a different class, like for books or like other things, it'd be a lot easier, yeah, to have a voice recording for that. But besides that, just having the feature is very, very useful. And Notability is also a great app that I like using it. The next thing I wish I did was, was have revision techniques. So when you get information from a class and you start getting notes down, one thing that I would constantly do, and I wish I never did this in the first place, but everyone does this, is you take the notes in class and you just constantly reread the same notes over and over and over and over again. And that's so bad for learning and to try to keep it in your brain. What you have to do is that you have to find a way to make it so you can actually memorize the information. So what I wish I did earlier was that, what I would try to do is get the information and try to condense it as much as possible. Once you condensed it, you try to condense it even more to the point where it's almost like you can read the entire thing in like 15 to 10 minutes or like less than uh, 25 minutes, basically. And basically you want to do this so that way when you're waiting for a test, you can literally just read out all the information really, really quickly and know everything and just learn where the stuff is at in the page. So I can memorize where the information was on the page like the spatial arrangement of it, and I know the answer from that part only. Like this, I remember this word being on the top left of the page, and that helps me memorize, okay, yeah, so that makes sense that this causes this, because on my notes, that word was on top left of the page. That's very, very important as well, and I wish I did that earlier, but I didn't. Now I'm gonna talk about the bread and butter, the main important thing I wish I knew that I'm using now for pharmacy school is active recall. Active recall is probably the most important thing you could do in terms of learning because it actually yields ways for you to actually learn material and to make it stick. And that's one of the books called that I actually talk about this method, which is called Make It Stick. And I'm also gonna link down below a video by Ali Abdal that talks about the fact of active recall and space repetition. And it's probably the most important video you can watch in terms of if you're in school or want to learn material that's like more conceptual instead of like math based questions or practice questions. That was the best way to learn that has been proven and I highly recommend it because it actually works for me in my last two semesters. I think it's very, very important. 
So basically what active recall is, is when you basically retest yourself. So basically you make questions and you re keep retesting yourself instead of reading over the same notes over and over again or highlighting notes over and over again because that doesn't show to work as well. And right now I use three different methods right now for active recall. My main method that I use right now is Quizlet. Now some people use Anki but I like Quizlet a lot because it has the dark mode and I've learned to learn how to use it so that it actually helps me in my class like multiple choice questions and it also allows you to do like long term learning so you can like to the question and then you can do a little part of the next question tomorrow and the next little part of the next day or if you want to you can like stop doing it and wait like a couple like two days and then do it again in the next couple days and basically it's like making flashcards but it's all online so I can do it from my phone I can do it from my iPad I can do it from my computer I can do it anywhere I am because it's all online so like Enki the problem I had with that before was that uh, I wasn't able to do it online unless I actually like look this app up and everything and it was kind of confusing for me but Quizlet I liked it better for me because all you have to do is download the apps you can download it offline as well and then you can access it anywhere so even when I want to train going to do to and from work I can do like 10 15 flashcards really quickly or even like 30 flashcards and like look up the information so that's very very useful I'm also probably gonna do a video about how to actually effectively use Quizlet because at first when I used it, it didn't really work out well for me, but I stuck to it and now I get a lot of benefit from it now that I actually learned how to use it correctly. So I think it's also important that you use the resource correctly. The main con I found with Quizlet was that you can put a lot of information in at once. So like if you have like very, very long um, messages or like long text that you want to learn about, it didn't really work out that well for using Quizlet or Anki because when you're doing about flashcards, it's like a lot of information memorized. And like it's better if you have like less than 10 words usually for that actual flashcard because when you have too many words, it's like, bro, like <laughs> way too much to like memorize and everything. So what I like to do was that when I have a lot of information, I like to either use Excel or I like to use my third option, which was my notes or uh, Notion. And basically what you do is that you make the question and then you uh, blank out the answers and then you go from each as you go through the questions of active recall you go through green to orange to yellow and then finally to like dark green i usually use between like before i when i first did i used to do only like red and green but now i started using like red yellow and green because or i use like red orange yellow and green because i found like some questions it was just like i had no idea what's going on like at all in the question and there are some questions where like I had a general idea, so that's where I gave them a yellow. And the questions I actually knew, I gave them a green. And then yellow was like, I'm almost there, but I'm not where I want to be for a test kind of thing. So that helped me a lot because it really made me be honest with myself in terms of my studying. And like I had to really force myself to actually learn material because I couldn't just be like, okay, I got like half the question, so that's, that's, that's okay, it's better than nothing. But no, I forced myself to actually get the question completely correct so that I can actually answer the question on a test. And I like the way it looks as well because then when you come back to it the next day, you can see exactly which parts of the lecture did you not understand. Like a lot of times when I did this, I saw that like certain uh, lectures, I was obviously not studying. And then I had to go back and study that lecture again. And that's one of the main things I like about this method because I can really see what I'm not retaining that well. It's also very, very key for me overall that you're like keeping up with it like a lot of times i would not actually do the material over and over again and it's like very important because if you look at cramming cramming works but it doesn't help with your long-term learning and that's very, very important for someone that's in pharmacy school or medical school or any major that involves medical degree or any major at all because it's important that you have your material and you constantly Look at, look at it over and over again because that way you can actually reinforce it long term. If you cram things, as you will notice probably, is that you forget it the next couple of days afterwards because as fast as it can go in, it comes out the next day. If you do a little bit every day, it's very, very hard for it to actually leave you because it's almost like your lifestyle now. Like It's almost like your routine. Like Once you get into routine, it's like very, very hard to get out of the routine and it's, it's much, much easier as opposed to just doing everything in one day and the next day you just chill. So that's one of the main things I have to work on, but I think it's very, very important as well is just make sure you keep up with it. 
And last thing, we'll talk about uh, the last bit that I use, which is Notes or Notion. Now, the reason why I like Notes is because what I like to do now is that when I take my notes, I make sure I condense it. I talked about that before. But you can also do Notes and you can just like, after you write down a couple of notes, close your eyes and try to just read over the same notes you read right now. So like, if I wrote down um, hyperlipidemia, and I talked about statin drugs, I would try to close our eyes and say, how does statin drugs affect hyperlipidemia? And then you talk about how like the HMG-CoA reductase works on um, cholesterol production. And then that would be your answer but then you have to actually force yourself to close your eyes and memorize that material instead of actually looking at the textbook and being like, oh yeah, I recognize that these words work with each other. Because by closing your eyes, you're actually forcing your brain to work harder into it. And I like to also use Notion, which is also kind of cool recently that I learned. So I'm trying to get more into Notion because I've seen it's very, very useful and you can use it for almost everything. So right now, I use a drop-down menu. So basically, you can have a lot of information and then what you do is that you have a drop down menu. So like what I noticed of myself was that when I see a lot of information on a, a paper, I get really, really like tired and I'm like, oh, I can't stay right now. So like with Notion, I like, I like how it's like, you make drop down menus. So I have like drop down menus of subcategories and then actual information. So like um, certain parts of the lecture, cholesterol synthesis. And then I'll do how cholesterol synthesis works on this part and then this part and then this part. And like that was a lot better for me to study because it looks like it's a lot smaller material. Even though it's a lot of material at once and it's like a huge page, I make it look condensed. And then by using that, I can look at the exact topic that I think is very, very important at that moment. And I can stay at one topic. And then I close my eyes and talk about how does this do this? Or you ask questions for yourself again, like active recall again. You ask the question and you talk about the same topics. So that's also very, very good. I really, really enjoyed that. So that's all my tips I have right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I'm probably gonna do more probably videos on exactly how I'm learning right now and exactly how to use each resource more in depth. But I just wanna give you like a broad view of everything right now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, share, and subscribe so that more people can learn about this video and learn how to study better. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.